you know, there are some mistakes in Rise of Kingdoms that you make and they're easy to recover from. And then there's mistakes like the one in this screenshot that are so savage and so cringeworthy, I struggled with this for over 24 hours later. This top six legendary mistakes guide is gonna help you avoid and also recover from legendary mistakes in Rise of Kingdoms. What is going on, Governors? Just cool here, and today we're gonna talk about the top six legendary mistakes that players are making every single day in Rise of Kingdoms with their legendary commanders. If you like Rise of Kingdoms guides that help you get value and smash your enemies, consider smashing that subscribe button for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos. We're a sponsored content creator, and today we're gonna be your legendary commander doctor, going in and helping you fix your legendary commanders or avoid these crisis situations. Let's start with number six on the list. The mistake is picking a commander to invest in that really makes no sense for your account. Let me give an example of a commander like Julius Caesar. New players come into the game and they're like, oh my gosh, I got Julius Caesar. I'm gonna go all in on this guy. And it's like, let's pump the brakes a little bit, people. Do you realize that Julius Caesar is designed for swarming cities? That's his best use with all these skills. And I'm not saying that's like the best thing you should do with this commander. I'm just saying he's designed to swarm cities, and that's not what 99.9% .9 of players are doing. So when you look into which commander you're going to invest in, just because you got a few of their sculptures or unlocked them doesn't mean that's the one you go for. Be patient with your legendary commanders. Have one or two that you're very interested in, and then focus on those instead, which brings us to mistake number five, a lack of focus. It is very common for people to put a few sculptures in one commander and a few sculptures in another commander. And like, that doesn't do very much for you. I would much, much rather go all in on the right commander than invest a little bit and have a bunch of commanders that are really not all that great at all. So the tip here is to focus in on one or two commanders that are really very good for you. Now, look, I've got a guide fully detailing the order in which I think every player should go invest in their legendaries. And of course, you can vary from that guide, but a card is up in the top. You can check that out at the end of the video. If you'd like to see that detailed list, step by step, which legendaries you want to invest in, spoiler alert, it starts with Esong. From there, you go to Richard or Alexander the Great. Optimally, it's Alexander the Great, depending on how many sculptures you have. And then from there, I'd recommend either Constantine or, again, that Richard the First. Now, on the topic of focus, something I see a lot of players do, and I myself made this mistake, this is mistake number four on the list, is spreading your gold stars across multiple commanders and going too wide. So in a similar idea to spreading your sculptures around too much, I've got a Freddy that is five stars. This makes no sense at all. Now look, the context in which I did this was totally different back in the day. Um, there were not new commanders coming out every three to four months. It had been like I don't know, like nine months or so of no new commanders being introduced to the game. And I was like, oh, I'm going to take Freddy to six stars, I suppose. Um, but I took him to five stars. There's no value to a five-star commander, okay? You should either be four stars and just try to unlock the skills like, you know, I've done here with Constantine. I've just unlocked the skills. Um, or with Julius Caesar here, I just unlocked the skills. That's not to say these aren't good commanders to take to six stars, but I'm focusing people. Even I need to focus. And I spend like two grand a month making mistakes so you don't have to, right? But I spend a lot of money and I still don't have the stars. So you must focus, especially if you're free to play. Do not take a legendary commander to five stars and then stop. You either go to six or you stay at four. But this in-between state really doesn't do much for you because either you're going to have that full march where you get all the extra talent points for all the extra stars, or you're going to use them as a secondary commander. And if you're using them as a secondary commander, all that matters is unlocking their skills. I've even seen folks go in and take a legendary commander to four stars at level 10 using a whole bunch of the special stars. It's a combination of the 
bundle and blessed, dazzling starlight sculptures that really get you there. But I would strongly recommend you either take them to six or leave them at four stars. And if you've got a commander like this, this is something in the business world that's called a sunk cost. There's nothing I can do about the fact that I already made him five stars, and I don't have the stars to take him to six stars, so I'm just going to leave him where he's at, and it's a sucky investment, but it's an investment I made, and it is what it is, and I've moved on with life. Maybe at some point I'll have the stars to go back and work on this guy, but I don't know if it'll be a thing that I ever do. Mistake number three is more oriented towards spenders, but I've seen... Uh, players that are low spend or free to play make this mistake as well. There's a commander you really want, like Esong. You've been saving up your sculptures. And the day the commander shows up in the Wheel of Fortune, you use every single universal you have. You expertise the commander on the first Wheel of Fortune that the commander showed up. Now, here's the problem with that. If you're playing a value oriented game, which especially free to play and low spenders should be doing, you should wait to expertise a wheel commander. And I'll put a diagram up on the screen, courtesy of Stormy, illustrating when commanders come into the Wheel of Fortune. You need to wait until you have had all of the wheels of glorious, glorious value before you start applying your Universal Legendary Commander sculptures. Otherwise, you're losing an opportunity to have gotten a lot of value by spinning a small number of times on the wheel. Even if it's just five or 10 sculptures you would have got for value, that seems really worthwhile to me. So in, if you are gonna be expertising a commander especially, or even if you've got a target like 5511, right? That's the first skill, the second skill, the third skill, and the fourth skill in that order, 5511. I would be really cautious about using a whole bunch of universals prematurely. The only folks that can get away with that are the folks that have been saving for a long time and are free to play and are not targeting an expertise. Then I think it's okay to go in and say, all right, I waited for Esong. Boom, day he shows up, 5511. Or Alexander the Great, boom, day he shows up, 5511. Seems very, very reasonable in that case. But man, I have seen people get burned where they're like, oh, you know, normally we only have three wheels for a certain commander. I think the first time that happened was for uh, Guan Yu. And then a fourth wheel showed up and people had already expertised him because they'd had him for like three wheels. And I was like, oh my gosh, just wait until the wheel cycles to the next commander before you expertise him. I've seen that with uh, the commander that paired with Artemisia. It was Ramses, right? Like people expertised him on the fourth time that his wheel showed up, and then it showed up like a fifth time or something. I mean, the point is, you you wait until the wheels are done if you're playing the value game. Now, if you're at war or you're in kingdom versus kingdom and you need to rally with that commander and you're the rally leader, that's a different story and you're getting value not from wheels but from killing enemy troops. That's okay. Let's move on to mistake number two, the second biggest mistake, which is using your universals. Your, your precious universal legendary commander sculptures on gold key commanders way too soon. So these are commanders, and I talk about this a lot because it's one of my biggest mistakes ever made in Rise of Kingdoms. These are commanders like Cao Cao, Charles Martel, um, Julius Caesar, and Freddy. Uh, El Cid is a really good example, Mehmed. These are commanders that come from gold keys. And you get lots of gold keys for free in Rise of Kingdoms. So you go in, you expertise one of these commanders, well, guess what? Every single sculpture you get after that point is 100% wasted. Now look, you do get value using that commander immediately for fighting in the field, for barbarians, or whatever you're doing with them, right? So you do get immediate value after you've expertised them, assuming you are in kingdom versus kingdom, or war, or whatever. Um, but after that, every single legendary commander sculpture is 100% wasted. And I'll, I'll maybe modify that statement slightly here, but just to give perspective, I've got like at least 2,000 wasted legendary commander sculptures here, and some amount of those are from universals I put onto commanders, and then after that is just dropping in from gold keys. So 
I think there is value to having these commanders' expertise, especially like Charles Martel, Double C, El Cid. Um, these are really great commanders, but wait until you're close to expertising them from gold keys before you start using your universals on them. That way you get a lot more value. And as a free-to-play player or a low spender, you really want to be using your universals on commanders you can't get for free in other places like Esong or Richard I or Alexander the Great. Those are much, 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 much better places for your universal legendary commander sculptures. Now look, some number of people I know are going to comment on this video and say, but Chiskul, you can use these commanders to star up another legendary. They're not wasted. They're still valuable. And I would argue, how much is a gold star worth to you? A single gold star, most people don't even pay gems for them. But if you did, what would you pay? 250 gems? 300 gems if you really wanted a couple? Right? Like, I guess maybe in the store they might cost you 500. Well, let me show you a little something over here about these gold stars. If I use one gold star, it's giving me 10% luck and 0.15% of the way to six stars. Remember that, 0.15% of the way to six stars. If I use one of these Julius Caesar heads, it is giving me 0.02% of the way and 5% luck. I mean, look, I could use these sculptures Okay, I could use them, and you could see it's it's not even, gosh, the six sculptures here. Six sculptures is giving me 0.09% of the way to the next level. I mean, I guess I could use my sculptures this way, but I would honestly rather just save them and see if they give us a better use for these at some point in the future. Technically, you can also convert them in the uh, rebuilding of your Crusader Fort in Stage 3. I'll put a card up in the top so you can see what that looks like if you want to. The point is, though, these sculptures drop in value dramatically. After you've expertise to Commander, I beg of you, <laughs> don't use your Universals on Gold Key Commanders until you've already got a lot of the other better uh, initial investments locked up and in a great place. Esong, Alexander the Great, Constantine. Let's go to the number one most savage legendary mistake. And spoiler alert, I showed it at the beginning of the video. Let me pull that screenshot up again. This right over here is the biggest, most common, most savage legendary commander mistake in Rise of Kingdoms. If you star up a commander too soon, you unlock skills and then your skills are randomly assigned. Now, you frequently want to control the order in which you invest in skills because some are better than others, and you can't pick which one the skill up is going to be applied to. It's applied randomly to all available skills. So what most players try to do is they'll leave a commander like Esong at one star until they max the first skill. When they're ready, they take the commander to two stars, they max the second skill. When they're ready, they take the commander to four stars and then hope that everything lands on the fourth skill because that's better than the third skill for most situations. Now, a lot of people find themselves in this situation over here. This is a 1-4-3-4 Esong, which sucks. And this player tried to fix the problem by applying more sculptures to the commander, which I actually think is a great solution. And they're just getting wrecked by the randomness of having those skill ups applied to the skills they are least concerned about, the ones they wanted the least. So what I would recommend is that if you have commanders that are like this, if they're commanders like Julius Caesar, then you move on with life and it kind of sucks, but you probably weren't going to use them anyways in most situations. And like, it's okay. It's really not the end of the world. If you've got a commander like Esong, however, which is a commander I think everybody should be using, then you've got a different situation on your hands. If you want to fix a commander like this, you can keep applying skill ups and hope that you have them land in the first and second skill. And in this case, because Esong is a commander that you want to expertise anyways, it just means that you won't get the value of having a 5-5-1-1 
Esong, but once you expertise him, it's not going to matter. You're going to max all the skills anyways. So for, for commanders like Esong and Alexander the Great, if you can commit yourself to actually fixing them, using your universals and committing to that task, that I think is going to be a really good choice for remedying these commanders that are in a really bad spot. And I don't think that most people should restart if they've done this wrong on their commanders. However, if you are going to restart, because that's a thing you're interested in, because the early game is fun, you want to fix all these commanders and you messed up literally every single legendary you have, uh, card up in the top for a guide that helps you get just a boatload of value doing what's called a jumper. Uh, that process gives you a ton of free stuff out of the gates and is a lot of fun. Also, link in the description to my Discord server where people create jumper groups all the time. You're welcome to join in in the party and join one of those jumper groups. Those are the top six legendary mistakes in Rise of Kingdoms. Let me know if there's a mistake that I missed down below in the comments or if you've committed one of these mistakes. Let me know which one it was. I've been guilty of several of these, quite frankly, and look, most all of them are honestly quite recoverable. If you're looking for some other guides to help you get value in Rise of Kingdoms, consider this video I made, Card Up in the Top, which is one of the very first I had ever done for Rise of Kingdoms, talking about the eight most common mistakes. Some of these we will have already talked about, but some of them you will be really surprised about ways in which you can get value in Rise of Kingdoms. If you found this video at all helpful, I would appreciate if you go on in and hit that subscribe button so you get more daily Rise of Kingdoms content. Throw a like on the video, which supports the channel. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.